Why is everyone in the living room? We're waiting on you. Sit down. We all have something to say to you. And what if I don't want to sit down? What is this? One of your creepy interventions? No. No. It's uh, not an intervention. In fact, we may be inventing something new here. It's kind of a prevention. We just want you to hear what we have to say. No, I'm going to my room. Mary, if you go to your room, we're all going to your room. Because we all feel that you're too close to getting into some real trouble here not to hear us out. We're your family. We love you. Look, if this is about the money... Sit down. I was taught that life is a school. And some lessons are harder than others. What I've learned over this past year is that you aren't as strong and determined to succeed at this school of life as I thought and so I haven't given you as much help as I now realize you need I talked to the manager of the pool hall you must have known I would he told me that you quit he told me that you were consistently late had a bad attitude and were on the phone too much so he had to let you go I talked to Pete at Pete's Pizza you told me business fell off and he had to let you go he told me that he let you go because he knew you were hanging out after work with Frankie and Johnny drinking beer with him he was afraid they were a bad influence on you and he was worried about your drinking and then driving home. Oh, please. I talked to Sergeant Michaels. He told me that you were pulled over for not stopping at a stop sign. And he said that the officer who issued you that warning ticket was worried that you'd been drinking. He was afraid he hadn't done you any favor. I'm afraid he didn't do you any favor either. None of us has. We just kept looking the other way because I don't think we wanted to see the truth. And the truth is, Mary, that we just love you so much. You're a wonderful young woman, and you have a lot to offer to the world. You're really special. You're really kind. And I love the way you just love life. But again, life has some hard lessons to learn. And I think I'd rather confront you tonight than continue to let you learn those lessons on your own. Now, I know that you know your two new friends, Frankie and Johnny, smoke pot and drink, and that they're irresponsible. Do you also know that he hits her? They have serious problems, and we don't want their serious problems to become your serious problems. I'm sure you haven't forgotten that you're still on probation. If you get arrested for drunk driving or possession of marijuana, you could go to jail. I can't let you go to jail, Mary. I can't. Especially not because you're just mixed up about what you want to do in life. You know, I thought if we gave you some time to figure that out, maybe you would, but... I'm afraid it... time's up. I think in trying to find yourself, you've actually lost yourself. You're not the first person that's had that happen, but... Before you get too lost and confused, we want to help. I was hoping that you would ask for our help, but maybe that's just too hard for you to do right now. You must know how much I love you, Mary. I really do. I love you. I'm, I'm sorry I haven't been around much. You're important to me. What happens to you is important to me. What happens to you is important to everyone in the family. But I've been watching you, and I really haven't been interested in being a part of what's going on in your life. So I've pretty much avoided you, and maybe I should have cornered you and given you my take on what you're doing a lot sooner. I see so many young women who are losers, mostly in the emergency room or checking into drug rehab at the hospital. I don't want you to be a loser. It's too easy to be the bad girl. You're better than that. I know I'm not perfect. I know I don't have all the answers, but I can tell you this. The most powerful thing I ever did for myself was to make up my mind to become a responsible person. And I still haven't built up to being responsible 24 hours a day, but I'm getting better at it. And I'm hoping sharing this with you will help you to just make up your mind to become a responsible person. If you can't do it for yourself, maybe you could consider the rest of us and how much we need you to be responsible. Whatever you do affects us all. I know you know that, yet you, you act like you don't care. All 
of us have to strive to be the best we can be. Not because anything less is unacceptable, because anything less is pure misery. I can see you're miserable. You are. This is not the best you can be. You can do better. I want you to do better. I'll do anything I can to help you do better. You just have to make up your mind that's what you want to do, and I'm there for you. We all are. We love you. I love you. I love you, too. <sighs> this is hard. Okay, I want to do this. You're my big sister. And I look up to you. Or I did. You've always been better at school than I am. You've always been better at everything than I am. And that at times has made me feel inferior. Yet most of the time, it's given me something to work toward. Because I wanted to be like you. But I don't want to be like you anymore. And I can only say that because I know that you don't want to be like you. You don't want to get fired from one bad job after another. You don't want to lie to mom and dad and the rest of us. You don't want to have bill collectors calling trying to find you. That's not you. You're that tall, beautiful, smart woman with a basketball in her hands and a brain in her head. I know you don't play basketball anymore, but maybe you could, or maybe you could play some other sport. Because it seems that when the team went down, you went down with it. Basketball has always been your identity. And maybe having the team fall apart may have caused you to lose your identity for a while. But come on, you're more than a former high school basketball player. You're an athlete. And that's an identity you can use your whole life. You need to compete. You need to be physical. You, you need the discipline of training. You thrive on all that stuff. No one's locking you out of every sport in the community. You have to get back out there, and I'm willing to help you in any way I can. But I think this is something you have to do on your own. You can do it. You've come from behind to win before. And you still got what it takes to be a winner. If that's what you want, I mean. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to say. Wait, I did say I love you, didn't I? I know I'm known as the Bank of Simon and... You all laugh at that, but and here's what I like about money. It tells you right who you are in numbers, not words that can hurt your feelings or make you mad. Numbers are undisputed facts. And the fact is, your numbers say trouble. It's simple. You don't make as much as you spend, and you don't make enough to meet your obligations. You'd see that if you looked at the numbers. But I, I know you don't like to do that. But you have to. I can help you set up a budget and a payment schedule if you want, but even if you don't want, take my advice. Don't spend anything else until you pay off your debt, and then don't get into debt again. And the first thing you have to pay off is your personal debt. The money you owe Sam and David. Now, I know a lot of people would put that off to last, and maybe a professional finance guy would tell you to pay your institutional lenders first. But I'm your brother. And I'm telling you that morally, the right thing to do is to pay people first especially relatives. And when you see that little column of debt marked Sam and David reaches zero balance, that zero is going to say right who you are. Just like I said. It's going to say that you, Mary Camden, care more about your family than anything else. It's going to say that you keep your promises to your family more than anyone else. And when you start seeing the rest of those little columns of debt go down week after week, the page is going to tell the facts of your debt recovery. It's a beautiful thing. And I want you to have a beautiful thing. Because I love you. I must be at the long meeting. I don't know where all this chummy advice and gushy stuff is coming from. Because I thought we were also telling you how mad we are. Because I'm mad. Really mad. You're selfish. You don't care anything about the rest of us. So I don't know why we're all supposed to care so much about you. You act like you're the center of the entire Camden universe. I'm tired of eating a cold dinner every night because we're all hoping you'll come home and eat with us. I'm tired of you waking me up every night when you clump up those stairs. I'm tired of mom and dad fighting about you. 
I'm tired of covering for you, and I'm not doing it anymore. You made me lie to Mom and Dad. You never came home to have pizza with me like you promised. All you care about is you. Thank you.